Hello and welcome to this one's Project Home DIY. I'm Christine Glow, your owner and curator of your Project Home boxes. This project is developed to get you a little bit more organized maybe. You can use this thing for this shelf, I shouldn't say thing, but the shelf for hanging different things on it by the door, the dog leash, your hats, your keys, and then also have a place to put things and store things, which is super cool. Um, it can also be used in like a bathroom, which would be really awesome for like curling irons, hang them from there so they um, can cool or hang hair ties, lots and lots of options. Some of you I know you're intimidated by the yellow, which we have lots of options. You don't have to go with the yellow, you can go with a different color. So this is white and stain. Any color you choose that would fit your decor better, you can choose that. So just make it yours. All right, so let's get started with the very first part, which we're just going to begin painting. So we have lots to paint here, lots of little pieces, lots um, to assemble, which is fun because we don't always get to build, but in months that we do get to build, I love it. all of our hardware to the side and these are the pieces we are going to paint so first steps first I'm gonna paint let all this dry and while it's drying we'll do the yarn um, to make the yarn balls so these are just a fun little addition to anything you can set them on your shelf you can set them on um, a a wood tray decor, something in the center piece type thing. Just really fun little addition. So we'll make those after this stuff is painted and drying. So I've got my yellow paint. I will be doing the yellow um, just to use the exact color that we chose. Yellow is one of the Pantone colors of the year, <clears throat> yellow and gray. So I chose something bold and bright, probably the boldest and brightest we've ever done for Project Home. So. Um, just a fun variation. Okay, so the pieces are fully painted. They are over there drying. I'm going to put my paint away and then get ready to do the yarn balls. Your little extra project while those are drying. So this is pretty messy of a little um, project. So have some paper out. The filler that we use in the boxes is pretty good for covering your tables and keeping it clean space. So go ahead and use that. You'll need the glue bottle, the balloons, the yarn, scissors, and that's it. So. The very first is to take your glue and dump it out and may add some water to it so it's a little bit thinner but we don't want it to be too thin because then it gets kind of, um, it'll take forever for your balloon to dry. So just add some water and then 
stir it up. If it's too thick, what can happen is when you um, put your, line, or your yarn on the balloon and the balloon gets covered in glue, then the spaces in between, like in between here, will have glue when you pop your balloon. If that happens, let this fully, fully dry really, really well because it did happen to these, but I fixed them. Um, let it fully dry really well so it's nice and crunchy and hard and then get put it underneath water in the sink so just get it wet again and those little tiny thin layers of glue will um disappear so they'll kind of dissolve and go away but you can't get it too wet for too long so and then just let it re-dry again so the trick to this is making sure that you saturate your yarn, but then getting a lot of the excess um, glue water solution off of the yarn. So take a bunch of your yarn, undo it. You'll want lots. <clears throat> you have tons. I gave you lots and lots of yarn. Um, and get it soaked in there. Kind of, I'm going to. Looks like I'm making a mess, but I promise I'm keeping it a little more organized. Okay, I'm going to, I'm keeping a track of this end because I want it out. I'm gonna soak this in the glue. Okay, and now I'm pulling it out, but wringing out the glue. And we're gonna set it right here on the table like this. And this will stop a lot of that excess glue. So wring it all out. This would be super fun to do with the kids because it's messy. And you know, they may they make messes anyway, so you may as well do something productive. Um, you can make as many of these as you want. I think we included 10 balloons just for fun. Maybe you can make a balloon garland. That'd be fun. All right, so my yarn is nice and soaked. I'm going to take the string, I'm going to tie it to the top. So it holds it in place while I wrap. And of course, while I squish this balloon, so it's kind of more round. Um, of course, while you're wrapping, if you go too close to the edge, your sides are going to slide off. Yes, that's true. Just, um, you kind of just got to mess with how you place them and don't go too tight. Um, so we're just going to wrap this around here in no particular fashion. See how it keeps slipping off the sides so then I have to go to a different angle. Just get your rhythm going. It's better to have more string than not enough. So that's gonna be just about right to me. Okay, and then just wrap your end under somewhere, just like that. Hang this in front of, I have a heater going on down here. You can maybe hear it humming a little. Um, you can just let them air dry and sit there. I would wait mm, probably a couple hours until they feel firm enough, maybe even a day let them fully dry really well. Um, and then you can pop the balloon and pull out the chunks of balloon through one of the cracks and it will be rock solid. If you um, watered down your glue solution too much, it might not be, the yarn ball might not be hard enough um, and you might have to redo them, but that is a yarn ball. We got it. All right. I'm going to set that in the heater right there to let it dry. Pretty easy. It'll be fun to do. It's kind of messy. <clears throat> Just takes a couple minutes though. All right. <clears throat> all right. All the wood is dry now. It does feel rough. And when you paint with a water-based paint, it kind of pulls up some of the grain of the wood. But we're going to sand over it first. That's a super important part, especially 
When you stencil, you must have a smooth surface or else st your stencil will bleed underneath. We don't want that to happen. So sanding is a must. Um, if you have, you, you have your sanding block um, in your, from your kit. So make sure that you use that, get that out. I'm just gonna quickly sand over all sides of the pieces. If you do like this worn look on the sides here, um, you can like sand off more right there, more or less, just depending on the look that you like. Same with when you do a paint and stained look, the more you sand, the more that stain from underneath is going to come out. So sanding is kind of um, the most forgiving technique that you can do because it really like just takes away brush lines, imperfections. It just kind of makes it all um, flow into one piece. So it's kind of my, um, my to top it off, like make everything perfect look. So I'm going to sand all these and then we'll get started. pieces are all sanded and we'll start to assemble now. Take your, um, these are your three backboard pieces. These are the front pieces. So we're going to work from the back side of these, not the front. The screws will go in the back of the board. I'm going to lightly wipe these off, get some dust off of them. Okay, so pick the front side that you want to see and to be shown. If you sand it a little bit more or less, that's what you'll choose now. <clears throat> and then take your boards <clears throat> and the back side has the deeper holes in them right there. So those are the ones that um, you'll be working with and lining up on here so that you know that's the back side. So to start, I'm just going to put those up there. Um, line up your boards so they are flush with the top right here. Flush means even. And take, and this center hole needs to be in the center of the board. You can measure if you feel more comfortable. Um, I'm not going to. I just like to eyeball things. And especially when perfection is not um, part of the process, I don't feel. Um, I just want to eyeball them. So once you have eyeballed it, go ahead and take your screwdriver and your screws and screw those in. Go ahead and make them nice and tight so they definitely um, stay put. Okay, the distance that you need between these boards is based off of this wood piece, or this metal piece. So make sure that the distance between the boards is the same width as this um, metal rod, because that is gonna go in some of them right in between there. So um, in some of yours, that metal will fit right in between there. and. So just make sure that the distance is about that and even. So I'm gonna put my third piece on there and check it out. And it looks like I'm going to have to move this piece up just a little bit. Okay. So I can take that one off. Okay, there is the back side. It's all nice and beautiful put together. Assembled. I did use my drill. If you have a drill, use it. If you don't, use a screwdriver. Totally up to you. Just kind of preference of tool. Okay, now we will assemble and put on the metal bracket. 
Just gonna pay attention to where the logo is, just because I want that on the bottom. And some of these might need a little bending, a little moving to make them go exactly where you need. So just keep that in mind as you're working with it. But the metal, these long pieces go right on the inside of these um, brace pieces. So make sure that you're just kind of, those will get screwed in right there. And then these metal pieces, you can bend and manipulate them to fit where you need them to fit once these brackets are screwed to the brace pieces. So the this black bracket gets put on with these tiny little black screws. And this is going to be um, a little bit challenging if you're doing it by yourself, which I am too. But just hold this one piece in place and then don't worry about that one later. We'll bend it into place where it needs to go. So this one goes <clears throat> just to the inside of the brace piece. Make sure it's flush with the bottom. And then I like to push my screw down and into the wood before I start turning. That just kind of gets it going and stuck in there. It'll make it a little bit easier on you. So that goes in and then I'm going to do the top one. It's better because I can be, don't have to have both hands. Okay, perfect. Now this one will be a little bit more difficult. I'm going to get my screw ready. And I'm going to hold this one in place so it matches where that one is. I'm going to gently, oh, a magnetic tip on your screw really, or your screwdriver really helps. Push it in there and screw it down until it's in place. And voila, there it is. I promise. I've made like, I don't know, six of these maybe now so far. Um, so I might be making it look easy right now, but I struggled, so don't worry. You may have to have somebody help you, another set of hands holding it in place. That's okay. All right, the bracket's on. I'm gonna look at it for its squareness. It's pretty much ending up in the right spaces. It won't, it doesn't have to fit in that crack at all. I'm gonna bend it up a little. Okay, your shelf, oh, I forgot the welcome word. Whoops. If you choose to stencil this on, there's a couple options. You can stencil it right across the top. Like I did here, I cut the stencil in different pieces. Um, on another one, I did a stained one, which is over there on the wall. I'm not gonna take it down right now. I cut the flowers out and put the flowers in different spots. Um, you don't even have to use it. This one doesn't have it on it at all. Um, totally up to you and where you want it. But I think I'm going to, since I did this one where I pieced out the stencil, I'm going to cut out the flowers out of this one and just put the welcome down here. That's what I'll do. These stencils are my favorite. They're so easy to use. There's no transfer tape. There's no really messing them up. The only thing you got to perfect is the bleeding of the paint through it and um, making sure, number one, this is something I cover almost every month in the group when we have stencils in our VIP group, which by the way, if you're not part of it, make sure that you join it. There's lots of tips and tricks and lots of good people in there that we all um, get to share with our projects with and it's super fun. So make sure you join that. But one of the biggest things when we do stencils in the group is my stencil blood, how can I stop that from happening? Number one, this surface must not be rough. It has to be smooth, okay? It's just like in order for something to be sealed, it can't be lumpy and bumpy or else it's not going to work. Like think of pre uh, 
press and seal around the top of a lid of a bowl. If you're putting press and seal there and there is say a lump of cookie dough and you tip it to the side, something can leak out because there's that lump there that's allowing air to pass through. In our case, it's not air that's passing through, it's paint. So, must have a smooth surface. Um, so I'm gonna re-sand right here. Okay, and not only with a smooth surface, but you need to have a clean surface. So I'm wiping it off now. It can't be dusty. It can't be dirty. You have got, it just needs to make sure that it can adhere to the wood as best as it possibly can. Another reason that I'm going to set this, I wiped that with a wet wipe. I shouldn't have, but um, I'm going to set that in the heater real quick to dry. But another reason why that this, these can leak is too much paint and pushing too hard. So I use a paintbrush. I know there's other techniques out there where people use like little squeegee spongy thingies like, like this that scrape on the paint. I don't do that. I don't use that because I feel like with that, you're again going to force that paint into areas where there is gaps and we don't want that. So the less um, we have to uh, force it down there, the better. I got my balloon down here. It's in the heater still, so it'll be ready. I'll take it apart. So this feels nice and smooth. Um, I kind of screwed up this one, the welcome word, because I was going too fast and I just didn't sand and I, it was my fault. So I um, had to fix it and go back over. Um, again, I just eyeball this. I'm looking at my stencil. I know that this cut edge is straight. I know this cut edge is straight. I can see the distance between there and there is the same. The distance between there and there is the same. Good, for, good enough for me. Um, I do realize that if you cut the flower out, it may be a little close to those um, embellish marks. So just take some tape and you can tape it off so you can paint easier. Okay, so that just gives me a little bit more area to paint. And um, I guess I'll share a little sneak peek with you guys, but check out this. The, this is Project Home DIY's very own 10 color set. I'm going to use one of the colors out of there. It's called Raven. And there it is. So we can use this it's brand new. So I haven't even opened it yet. So it's sealed. But you guys will be getting these too here shortly. Coming up. I can't tell you exactly when because you know what? The stars just have to align in this world these days and I just can't make any promises like that. So this color we're using is called Raven um, and it's just our black. But I'm just lightly, gently painting that down. Another reason why the stencils leak is because of paint that's too thin. So again, something that's like really watery obviously is going to find a way out if there is a space. So we don't want that. A little thicker, this is great thickness of paint. Trust me, when I was designing these paints and going back and forth with our maker of them, I was like, nope, 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 won't work, won't work, none of pigment, this, that, the other. I was very picky about these paints. So they're going to be better quality than you can find on the shelf elsewhere, for sure. So there is the stencil. I'm gonna peel this off right away. You don't have to wait for it to dry. I don't recommend waiting for it to dry. Let's get it out of there. And look, absolutely no leaks, none. 
there should not be any problems with these stencils whatsoever if they are being used correctly and not too much paint there's no paint globs They'll, you'll see it's very thinly put on there um, I do see some people recommending when another member says my paint bled what do I do and some people suggest um, putting a layer of Mod Podge first you cannot do that with these mesh stencils so if you it's just like a screen door if you smear something on the screen door and let it dry nothing's gonna go through there again once it's dry so it's the same concept don't use the Mod Podge technique with these stencils as you could with a vinyl stencil and transfer tape don't do that with these if you <clears throat> do that you're gonna basically glue this to your surface and not get it off because Mod Podge is just glue so don't do that that's not a good idea with these reusable stencils um let me get this cleaned up here so our 10 color set I'm so excited for her. can't wait for you guys to see all the colors and look at those okay that looks awesome I love the word looks perfect okay last couple steps so this shelf it can be loose in there or um, you don't have to screw it down but you have the you can screw it down so it doesn't fall or move or get bonked or whatever totally up to you um, so when you do that, right here on the bottom is a hole for another tiny miniature screw to go in. So we get to do this again. Ooh, can I do it? Ha! Ah! So close. Okay, I got it. Ah, come on. Not my lucky day. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just gonna stick that in there and secure that shelf down so then it can't be moved or budged which you don't have to do but you can i did when i designed this shelf the very first design this one didn't have that in there so it is loose and i thought you know what i think i want to put a hole in that bracket so we can screw it down so it doesn't move so it can't be bumped okay there is the shelf without the hooks. So for this, I put the welcome word in the center. So I don't think I'm going to put a hook there, but you know what? Like you can put these hooks anywhere you want. Like if you want two over here for two sets of keys, totally perfect. You can do that. If you want one over here for your purse and your keys, perfect put them right there you can hang them up here on the ledge on the front um, that's kind of fun you can even spray paint these a different color um, there's so many options variations what you can do with these hooks I think I'm gonna do that I kind of like the idea of having like two hooks in ready for um, keys I think that's perfect okay so you just take the other little teeny screws and screw the hooks in pretty simple they're the dark colored screws the silver will go with the brackets for the back and it's done check out that so thank you guys for joining us um, I do have let me check if it's dry totally okay so this is dry this is good to go I'm gonna cut you can hear it they like start separating from the sides and it crackles these are super fun okay so I'm just gonna cut the top and there it is oh and there it goes I dropped it all right guys that is your project home DIY for June 2021 
we have possibly, if you are making this for the first time, we might have extras of this shelf in the store. If you have a desire to have several of them, maybe in each kid's room to organize things, it would be perfect. So we do have lots more if you would like to snag another. I cannot wait to see all the fun colors and variations that you guys choose to do with this. So make sure, again, you join our VIP group so we can see your finished creations and how you decided to decorate yours. Thanks for joining us. Can't wait to see you again next month. Bye.